Let's talk right quick about the halftime show. Uh, I'm I'm curious your thoughts here. Uh, so so open up with Dre and Snoop exactly like you said. I mean you were 100 percent right. Um, start off with the Snoop song. You know you got your la di da di da, and then you've got uh, California Love, and then they bring uh, out Fifty Cent. Yeah, now da di da, the the greatest lick in 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 music history. Oh yes, I I think so. Hey, hey so it's the the, the <laughs> greatest lick, the greatest beat in music history. Oh yes, yes, it, it's the next episode. It's on a, a it's a Snoop song, but yeah. all of these songs were produced by Dr. Dre, and. That's right. This them bringing out Fifty Cent was shocking to me. Like I could not, and of course, I mean, in the club, well, was, that's the one guy that wasn't announced, right? Like right. everybody else yeah. was on the card. Like, yeah, everybody else was on the card. Kendrick, we all knew Mary, we all knew knew Eminem, we knew all knew everybody else. We didn't know Eminem. Eminem wasn't recorded. Eminem wasn't leaked. No, no, Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent wasn't 50 the one. Cent. I'm leaked. so sorry. Yeah, 50, that's right. And so I couldn't believe when he. Popped down there and was like hanging upside down and whatnot. <laughs> like, if if I had been him, I'd have been like, you know what? Maybe don't hang me upside down. Like, he looked so much better when he was standing I, up. <laughs> I didn't understand that. Like, I thought, all right, like somebody thought this was going to be a good idea. I don't know who, but that like visually didn't look good. Everything else about it was the show was unbelievable. He instantly, instantly goes up to Michael. And Prince level, it's, like there's a. I don't know who who the fourth one I'd put on Mount Rushmore yet, but but those three are now on Mount Rushmore. That instantly is on there. Yeah, I do. I do think that it was. This was probably a top five for me, as far as halftime shows. Uh, I know a lot of people that that we are friends with. We're not huge fans of it, but I, I think really? some of those are like older. Older people. Uh, so our buddy Zach uh, from Shinedown, he yeah. posted last night and said, look, I don't care if you like these guys or not, but you put this lineup together and it sells out every stadium in America. Like, you you put this bunch yeah, on a I tour. Didn't see, I didn't see anybody that didn't like it. But I also... I'm friends with a bunch of old people, man. <laughs> like, way older uh, than me. <laughs> but, but, okay, I'm friends with a bunch of old people, but they're not on social media. And if they are, they're on Facebook. And most of them, to be honest, aren't watching the Super Bowl, and they damn sure just didn't watch the halftime show. Like, like, like they're you know they're oh yeah, I'm protesting whatever. Like that's, that's that's the old people that I know. Well, that's see, I didn't have anybody that was like complaining about any protesting or anything. It's just people that that don't like this type of music. It's the people that preferred to have Bruce Springsteen or Tom Petty or like the Who, right? And those okay. those halftime and shows were like I love listen, yeah, I loved all those halftime shows. I thought they were all spectacular. I'm a huge fan of all of them. This was overall from start to finish. Under, there wasn't a song I didn't know every word, to, yes. every word to. And that's weird because I'm almost 40 and I don't listen to hip hop at all anymore. Like I hate it all. Kendrick literally is the only hip hop artist that I knew who they are. And that's like, I watched it with a 20 year old. And he was like, the only guy I care about watching is Kendrick Lamar. And I was like, that's because you're 20, you dumb son of a bitch. And I put him in a corner real fast. And then I was like, you're going to listen. You're not going to the bathroom. You're not getting out of that chair. You're going to watch that screen. I'm turning it up loud. You're going to listen to these guys. Yes, They're because amazing. Kendrick wouldn't Kendrick be anywhere wouldn't be here without these guys. If it wasn't guys. for these guys. But, <laughs> but like, like new hip-hop, like I'm, I'm, just, I'm out. I got no interest in it at all. But 90s hip-hop? Oh, my God. On, yes, man. I'm I'm all over it, man. So so California Love, you got In the Club, you got Family Affair and No More Drama by Mary J. Blige, you got Mad City by Kendrick, you got uh, uh, All Right by Kendrick, and then Eminem comes out, and I was shocked that he did Lose Yourself. Like, absolutely I shocked. Because I just, that, that song was so big, and it was such a huge thing, but it was, it was, it's gotten to a point where it's kind of corny. Like everybody talks about the mom spaghetti stuff. I I kind of thought he'd go, you know, somewhere else. Like they obviously they nah. came out and they you know. played the hit, man. This is what they did. Nobody came out and played the new stuff or the friend stuff. They came out and they played the hit. And if you were born in the eighties at all, or late seventies, you knew every word to yeah. every one of those songs, all of them. The whole list. <laughs> you uh, do you agree that this would this lineup would sell out every stadium in America? 
Well, yeah, I actually oh, think yeah. I actually think you could knife two of these random people and sell out every stadium in America as long as you got Snoop and Dre. You can I, take the other three or four, and you could just spin a wheel and just axe two of them, and you're still selling out every arena in the country. I think you still need world. Eminem. Like, uh, maybe, maybe, but I still think you're selling it out. Like, you're just it's going to be one of the greatest shows you've ever seen. Yeah. Last night, what was it like? Twelve minutes long. Like the whole thing, yeah, and, and it's it's one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. <laughs> no, I enjoyed I it. it. I enjoyed I it a lot. It. Mary J. Blige laid out when she was done, and I just wanted to lay out. One of the, I will tell you this: one of the guys I was with looked at me and was like, "You know, he's singing California Love," and I was like, "Yeah," and uh, and I was like, you know, I, I said, you know, I saw, you know, sweating like the whole, you know, they should hologram me and Tupac. Tupac, yeah, and I one of the dudes with me. It. <laughs> One of the dudes with me was like, "What if Tupac showed up and was like, I've been alive the whole time." I was like, "I was like, oh man, I was, there's there's nothing. I, I might have died. I really might have like twelve year old schoolgirl just freaked out. Elvis Presley in the building died. It's it would have broke every. It would have broke the internet. It would have broke every every line of communication we got. <laughs> like everybody would have been on it. it. It was just ridiculous. So." And yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I I don't like the is it better than Prince? Is it better than like my my lifetime? I thought Michael Jackson, but but that was when I first really like super fell in love with football, and the Super Bowl meant the most to me. And I loved Michael Jackson, like I worshipped man, and and so that performance is always like my best. I don't. I can't tell you that Prince is better than it. I mean, it happened like twenty years later, or fifteen years later, or whatever. And this happened like fifteen years later than that. So I'll tell you this: I think it's those three, and I think the gap between number four that gets on Rushmore is pretty sizable. Those three, I feel some. I feel safe carving them in stone and saying nobody's beating them, nobody's stopping them. Yeah, I can. I can go with that. I can totally agree with it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.